going. And uh, we got three races today on Friday, US Open, San Diego Yacht Club. And forecast is for six to 12. I bet you we see 13, but we'll see. West, Northwest, which is one of our best directions. That means you gotta be able to play shifts, but you can't tack too much still. You know, we're a four tack beat max. sites are one of the biggest weaknesses in youth sports. I teach it all the time and 
I never sailed on a world-class boat that didn't use line sights unless there wasn't one or we couldn't get one because it was nothing sticking out on that shore but in the ocean it's very lucky to have something close to the line and the other thing you use to judge the line is the other good sailors around you so when you see really good sailors moving forward you probably are moving forward a little and you know you're judging your you're not just using the watch only the skipper's looking at the other boats quite a bit anytime you're feeling like you're getting screwed your first reaction is to turn down go down to a close reach get the boat moving and then go back up or whatever you have to do but you cannot try to once a boat's gaining on you into the line you cannot try to go up and and match it you gotta immediately reach a little anytime you're late for the start or getting burned you gotta reach a little to get lift on the boards okay here we go race one us open san diego tiny fleets out here which is all right there's a big regatta going on on the east coast right now 49 international i 420 regattas all these things club 420 regattas there's kids sailing all over the country the cool thing for us is our tier two kids are out our kids with less than a year experience are here and our tier one kids who have been sailing the boats two three years four years uh five years in some cases are on the east coast Two eighty is where the mark is. Half a mile. Four boats racing. Two zero one three is Ava and Kaya. Brand a light new twenty nine er. And uh, they'll be doing the Ida Lewis Women's Nationals here soon. We got Olympia and Maribel. They're gonna go back and do four twenties on the East Coast here in a little bit. But they've been, they're still on the Sabbath. They're a couple of our best Sabbath sailors. Olympia and Maribel, one minute to go for race one. Julia and Maddie. Julia is our best Sabbath sailor, one of our top three. And she uh, team at our top national performance, Sabbath national. They're still Sabbath too. Two boat programs, pretty much. Sabbaths and 29ers, or Sabbaths and 420s. The Borellis do a little bit of, they dabble in the 29er. But they're Sabbaths and 420s. And then the other team is Gabe and Zach. And, uh... Gabe is just graduated from UCSD. He's been... Don't be fighting with people before race one. Make sure we're just... Remember, the first two races is low risk. We don't take big risks early in regatta. There's no need to. Somebody is going to be fast and somebody's going to be slow. And if we're slow, we got to figure it out and, and get faster. Good. Julia, 30 seconds. A little back. Pin ends favored by a little bit. Oh, and the biggest thing is it swells. Different leech profiles, but not too bad. The Borelli should hike and pull the main two more inches. So we are in seven, eight knots, or so right at the point where the skipper has to start hiking. conditions. Julia's not hiking that hard. Yeah, she is. So they're right on the edge. They need to just pull more bang and more cunning, maybe a little more cunning him. For the next race, more jib higher probably to flatten the jib a little. But you know, they're in and out. You notice the swells now. Okay, you're going to see them get flat when they get to the top of the swell. Let's watch. If you bear away and head for Coronado in those flat spots, you're going to just stay on the swell longer. You yeah, so they like to heal a little more than other people, and I'm okay with it. It's better to have that than somebody who's trying to be all cool and sail super flat and then dunk their crew and park it. Um, I don't mind if they heal a lure. I mean, they're they're winning. The leech of their jib, they just let out, and then in, when they feel good, they can pull it right to the spreader tip there. And it's a, a tiny bit looser than I'd be. Um, I would I would keep Maribel not moving, and then Olympia moving a lot with the jib another inch tighter, but. I'm okay with it. They just need more jib hired would help that. 
Jib higher moves the jib lead forward. Bane is not easy a lot. They could go a little more bang. They're a little overpowered, so they could go a little more bang. They already have their Cunningham on, so more bang with the main team out in it. Jib out after the tap. Very good. Main's out. Grab the jib sheet. Go into pipe mode. That was really good. They just got to pull the main harder and hike harder. See, they're twisting too much. They got to they gotta pull the main harder and hike harder. Anyway, I'm loving it. Okay, so I'm losing, I'm holding trees with Julia. No, I'm gaining the island. See, I'm getting more islands, so I'm ahead of Julia. I'm making trees on her very slowly. Oh, now, now we're holding on the island. Oh, she just got lifted. But again, by ducking, you know, this is easy stuff. This is easy stuff, but by getting ducked, um, she's gonna come out fine here. Yeah, so Olympia should press. Accelerate, good, and then get, and she's got to make the mark. She's not going to make the mark, so Julia's got the advantage here. Good, and jump forward a little. Oops, sorry, I was a little tacky with the video camera there. I was using my, oh boy, they are screwed. Their jib, and, their jib and main both. You know, their main, their jib looks too loose. And their main, they gotta pull it on harder. They gotta pull it on harder. There you go. They're, they're getting messed up by the swells a little, so that's okay. Wow. Julia played that very well. Now we have overall team goals that we went through. I don't have those. I'll try to remember to put them up on the video on a piece of paper. But we have long-term goals for our entire team, like pre-race routine. Uh, knowing how to do soak mode, knowing how to do heat mode, um, getting proper twist in the sails, up when I mean, we do this at every regatta. They're just fundamental bullet points. Now, right now we're in swell, so you're gonna notice them going flat at the top of the swell. Right now they're in the trough. Huh. They get to the top of the next swell, a little swell right now. The boat should get flat right there. Now they're dropping into the trough. So you get in a rhythm of it. Here's a bigger swell this time. Three, two, one. It should get flat. And then as you get off the swell, the wind increases. Yep, right there. Here comes the swell. Five, four, three, two, one. Light air right now. The reason is because the swell is launching you away from the wind, which is canceling out the wind by ever, however much that swell is moving. If that swell is moving at four and a half knots, then you're going to get a decrease of close to that on every single time right at the top of the swell. Okay, this is good. First race together. These guys are okay. All right, no overbend wrinkle in the bottom of the main. It's side force conditions. You need as much power as you can get, basically, with the stiff leeches. These guys look pretty good. These guys have a little more vang than the other. And our goal for Maddie was to be further forward, upwind and downwind, and that's still our deal. When we're bending our knees, that means we're underpowered. If they're not, if the skipper's not hiking, that means we're underpowered, and that means bow in the water. We call it the knuckle. The knuckle. See how our knuckles flying out of the water? That's that's uh, eight plus knots probably for their for their size. For a bigger team, it'd be ten knots before the knuckle comes out. Maybe nine, ten. A tiny team, their knuckle of the bow will come out of the water in seven or eight, six, seven, eight. Swells are launching you from left to right. 
So watch, top of the swell, flat boat. Puff, as you get off the swell. We're gonna see how the mass, yep. Here we go, we're at the top of the swell right now. And you gotta be careful not to bear away too much. Yeah, on the first up win, these guys had the Traveler too tight. Now we got, again, this is their first race. Uh, Zach's a 17. He's still on the 17. The crew's still a race 17 guy. 15 years old, still races Sabbaths. We like to stay in Sabbaths till we're like 17 if we can. And uh, he's one of the bigger kids who still races Sabbaths. And uh, he was letting the main out too much. And you can tell their outhaul is way too tight. They had their bang too loose on the first upwind too. So they had the traveler too tight, bang too loose. So every time he was letting the main out six inches, I mean, they still have a lot of twist. So he's just got to pull the main harder. He's got to pull the main harder, 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 and let the out hole off a little. His sail's just out of balance. The jib looks okay. I think we got to go more jib higher. Cool. We're just going to get better and better here. They're set up to golf, but it's not pretty yet. They're going to look a lot better when we get them going here. I'm really lucky to, you know, be able to have Regattas to get this close. Okay, again, their, their biggest fix is try not to twist too much. Um, they're both their sails are out too far, so they're, they're already transitioned into a little bit of driving force condition, but the skipper's not hiking yet. The good news is they ain't pinchers. Okay. Uh, these girls have sailed a very good race out. I do think in race one and two, there is no risk. There are no battles. We just kick people's butts. That's our goal. We sail around people. That's what we do. We don't, we, we're not calling protest on people and uh, fight. We are just VMG all the way around. Okay, so let's look at their sails. These girls look like they have their travel perfect. The bottom of their mane is a little too flat. So, but they're 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 much tighter than uh, the other girls. They're doing side force conditions extremely well, and that's partially Julia's Sabbath experience. See how she's bearing away though. Okay, so what we would change on this team is as Maddie bends in, she would put the bow deeper. As she bends in, she would lean forward, and that'll help keep the bow on the wind. Step forward. Remember that on 29ers when you're pulling the main in. You're stepping forward. She's kind of doing. It. They just need looser outhaul and probably no bang on. And their traveler is stalling the main. Their main, uh, their main is almost perfect. No tighter on the traveler, I don't think. We're only looking at nine, 10, 11 knots today. Whoa, this is a lot of fun. But their leech is lined up with the spreader, and their main is right on. These ladies will win a race today. I know it. We're gonna have three days that are very similar to so we are gonna get a lot of dogs. Okay, when you come out of those packs, you go below the mark a little, and you watch the telltales and you play the gym, and then you trim it in. If you're overstanding by a little, or even if you're right on lay, you tack and you go below the mark for a second, and don't go into point mode right away. You gotta wiggle that lured telltale. You almost have to stall it a little after to make sure we're getting that power and the, the side force in the boat and getting the you know so we can flatten the boat and get some flow going on the board quick so bang would go off right now uncleated all the way in this wind do about seven inches six inches cleat it flag is going to go up there about one minute before the race. So they have all these things that you learn. They'll blow a bunch of sound signals. They'll put up the orange flag. And one minute exactly after that's the five minute. There's a submarine out there. And then the line sight is I'm off the line right here. 
Keep sailing up here, ladies. Look at the Coronado Islands. Keep sailing. Foot off a little. Yeah. See how you're lined up with the islands? Do you think you're over, Kaya? Right. So the island will get you kind of a ballpark. See how that is? Look at this, they've made the course a little longer, 0.6. Remember, if you look back at race one, you're gonna see 0.5, and they put the, the mark at 275. The mark is at 275, but the wind is at about 268, 270 maybe. So that means Port Tack is a little bit closer to the mark. But really right now, you're, it's less than a minute. It's coming up on one minute. And you're looking up there and you can't see anything other than there's a hole at the starting line right now. So other than that, it's really hard to tell. The last race, uh, it was kind of right favored maybe. And and again, four tacks max. So, you know, I mean, you can hit a five or eight degree shift and tack six times and you just negated any gain you made. So uh, it's not that skiffs are stupid boats. It's, uh, that you know they have their limitations it's not like a big tactical tactics is not what really wins the races all the time your your strategy and tactics here you know it's the people that can sail the boat vmg mode like a million race two They are in trouble. This is a lefty. This is a lefty. Oh, they are in trouble. Oh, wait, what am I looking at? I'm sorry. I got the wind that I said that. Oh my god. Yeah, they are all great. Yeah, sorry, I was looking at the red buoy there thinking that was the pin for some dumb reason. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to keep the bed. Well, we're working on on the boat on the right. So everybody's different, right? They all need different stuff. And what we're trying to do is we moved Ava and Kaya a little further forward in the boat for this race. Just a little, three, four, five inches. And when it gets light, bending forward. Again, you can see the effects of the swells. You see how unstable the mass gets? For Gabe and Zach, again, we didn't change much on four and a half, just a little further forward for Zach in the light spots. Okay. And they have a much better looking mane this race. And they wanted to go right this race, so yeah, they felt good about the right. I, I told them I really wanted to have them try to stay. See how he's letting the mane out too much? You gotta just hold that thing, man. You barely let it out. The leech, every inch you let the main sheet out, Oh, kill. Every inch you let the main sheet out, the leech is going out like five or six inches. He needs more bang, so that doesn't happen. That's all right, we're having fun. Look at how even these girls are. Again, the swells are a challenge. Nice, and then the crew jumps forward out of the tack and has the bow down, nice. So I'd say they're starting to get warmed up. I told most of the crews that the crews need to stay higher in these swell conditions. If you're bending your knees over and over again, you're actually releasing the pressure off the centerboard if you do it too quickly. So if you jump, if you lurch your butt in as the boat gets flat, it pushes the boat sideways and the centerboard stalls. We're trying to keep even flow. Oh, pearl jams on there. Uh, even flow. You can't bend. If you're bending in a lot, you need to be higher on the trap. But she's doing outstanding. She's keeping her butt low and she's leaning forward. Look at that. And it's all swell based. Watch. Top of the swell. The skipper's going to want to bear away. You got to be careful. Every time you bear away, you're sailing away from the next puff, right? The wind's coming from the mark. And every time you turn towards Coronado, you're sailing away from the next wind. A lot of people don't realize that. That the wind is up there, and if you get to it later than other people, they just carry one puff to another and sail away. This is much better. We got a race. We got a race. They're doing an excellent job of not easing their mains. 
in the old days we used to play the main way more than you know it's been changed for 10 years or something but now it's like you're only playing the main with a little bit of feel and with practice but you're as soon as you let the main out you're losing side for cool these guys look very similar they have more twist than the other girls and they are lighter Again, the swells are going to watch how the boat gets unstable. Wow, they don't look unstable. Our goal for Olympia and Maribel for this race was to have Olympia hike more instead of easing the main. Ease the main one inch and then hike harder instead of easing the main two inches. So you can just do that with your upper body. You can almost put your toes under the tow rail and just lean on it. But they look outstanding. I would I would trim the sails a tiny bit tighter. I wouldn't let the quite that much twist. I think we're going to see less twist uh, on these guys, and they are definitely bow down. So Julia can just move back if the bow is going down too much. She can just scoot back. But Maddie's really locked in. She's not bending her knees nearly as much as she was last race, but she's an inch or two higher, and she's further forward. So we have more side force resistance we have the whole hole in the water we have the full water line length in the water last race if you go back and look at it they had their knuckle out of the water a few times the knuckle of the bow yeah look how tight their mane is their jib could be a half inch tighter they have a tiny bit too much twist so let's see if their jib's fluffing at the top first and watch the swells top of the swell three two one flat bow see that okay then the wind fills in again she did very good not footing off in that flat spot. Maddie just bounces forward a little. And that, with the bow in the water, gets the stern out, drag out of the water. A lot of kids, when they bend their knees, uh, they lean back and it, it pooches the stern. So that's a skiff term. Pooching means the stern is digging. I almost think we'd rather have Julia with her butt in the boat and then just lean out. Maybe Maddie in that puff could have just eased up a, a little more. I don't know. I'm liking this. Right as I said that, they got more wind. But this is just great racing. Look at this. This is great racing. I think she's going up a little in the... I think she should go straight when the boat heals a little. And then go come up. So this is good news. We're right here with four boats after race one. Much better race. Everybody was able to incorporate what we're working on here. The cool thing about having only four boats is we get to do a clinic regatta. And also after race one, it's very easy for your mind to go to a dark place. So. You don't want to start thinking, oh, everything's bad right away. It can happen when you're young. You're thinking, oh my God, what happened? We practiced and this isn't working. And it's just sometimes races happen for a reason. Like they just happen the way they happen. Anybody who doesn't think that circumstances affect races, some people call it luck, but circumstances happen. You get out of phase with the wind. I mean, there's no crystal ball out here. It's not like somebody knows what's going to happen to the wind. Sometimes people just get Okay, they got a wrap in their spinnaker. Okay. So I think these girls did fine. I don't think they got worse. I think these two teams uh, just got better. So again, we're working on, uh, they look good right here. Step forward in the light spots. Yeah. That's what's good about this. I get really close so you can really watch. So they're about two inches from two blocked on the main. Uh-oh. Oh, seaweed. Good job, ladies. You can catch them. They got seaweed on the downwind, I think. 
Good job. You'll catch them. You're still in second. Wow, this is such good learning. And what do you do if you catch kelp? You know, it's just that's that's your only choice, what they just did. Their only choice was to stop and pull the board out. That's why your boards have to go in and out. Your center board has to go in and out relatively easy. So that, this is good racing. Yeah, see, that's too much twist. But they're comfortable. They're back in the race. But their boom is way too far off center. But I think he's sitting like that because it's just he just feels better steering. Okay, the girls are coming back. I think I'm gonna talk to them about trusting their upwind skills and not looking at the other boats very much. Uh, they're just working so hard. Like the skipper needs to just not work so hard because it's not windy. Right now it's probably nine knots and you do work a little harder than that in six, but it's not moving the rudder very much. Oh. Full BMG mode, like almost like you're out here by yourself. And you're sailing, look at that thing. I do think the Borellis have taken the lead again after that. So the good thing about that is we know the team that we have a team that's fast both up and down. So the good news about that is that we're not going to get to big regattas in the future and realize that we need to practice in this stuff. The bad news is that they're going to frustrate you a little, right? Because they're they're fast up and down. They they were a good 25 seconds behind. And uh, I'm going to tell you the reason. Uh, sailing in swells spreads these fleets out. If we had flat water right now, we would have, in the other fleets, we'd have closer racing. But the swells are messing with your mind. But yep, the Borellis have taken the lead. Looks like she's hiking more. Olympia there. Yeah, that was a good move. Tap right on him. Oh, yeah, good save. Pretty cool, that is a 13 year old crew right there. Savage Sailor, 420 Sailor. And she's laying it right now for sure. Yeah, that's how you tack the boat, man, to be honest. I mean, you can't do it much better than that. Where the boat's just on the edge of control. And it's so great when they're winning a race and they know they're fast down when they still did it that way. Yeah, the crew's just like, oh, 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 bouncing a little though. hiking soak mode it's good when you're in the lead here just to kind of stay low don't go start reaching way high soak mode cruise could be further forward but soak mode with the crew sitting in and then transition into the traffic excellent yeah they're going right into traffic and that's okay wow we have some cumulus clouds this is we have not had this you see those little clouds in the mountains we have not had this for weeks we had uh, sea breeze conditions from uh, February, March, and then going into April, we have had June gloom, cloudy, 65 to 69 degrees for almost solidly a two month period. And so now we're actually, that's good for tomorrow. I bet you anything, we'll see a higher upper end tomorrow. Day two of that is, can often be good, who knows? Who knows? The, um, you know who really knows what's gonna happen. My prediction is tomorrow for Saturday, we're gonna see a higher upper end, maybe 14 knots at some point instead of right here. We've seen maybe up, up to 12 today, probably 11. Tomorrow we should see 13, 14, just briefly maybe. Cool. Wow. Even after checking kelp there, so that was amazing. 
very good job by this team. Just beautiful out here. One more race. So again, we've got a lot of team goals always leading up to our goal regattas. And some of our kids are on the East Coast getting ready for one of those. That's the Youth World Qualifier, the US Youth Championship. So every year that's our big team goal, race team goal is to do the Youth World Qualifier, wherever it is. This year it's in Bristol, Rhode Island. Uh, but after every two races, one of our team names is, after every two races, small changes or big changes. These guys are making small changes. The guys that get more in the back, they're gonna do bigger changes. We're gonna look at jib higher tension. We're gonna look at board height. We're gonna look at jib position. Make sure we're on the correct holes. We're gonna go less out haul, more vang. We're gonna definitely make a lot of changes. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna change how we steer. Maybe change how we start. We might start taking more risk right now. I mean, why not if we're, if we're in the back? So, but every two races, like high school sailing, every two races, you're kind of reevaluating. You guys are trained on that. Reevaluating and uh, big changes if not doing well, small changes if doing well. 